cataractcoach.com and I'm not doing a very good job of holding the eye of the fixation ring. That's a little better, I suppose. If you were careful, you saw the LASIK flap edge there as well. Here's some anesthetic in the eye. I'm going to show you my thought process in this video of how to be self-critical. Not the best of drainage. See this ocular surface has some oil there. Temporally, there are a few lashes that are not tucked away. Fill the eye with viscoelastic. Now you see right there we're going to make our temporal incision. There are a few lashes that are in the way and we should be trimming those or, or, or covering them up with adhesive or tape. Here's the incision. It looks pretty good. It's a little on the short side. And time for our capsularexis. To help if I center the camera a little bit better. Here comes the rexus. Now don't confuse the rexus flap edge for that LASIK edge that you also see there. And again, the view is a little bit off of the field. Certainly the scope view, the microscope view is bigger, so I'm still seeing what I'm doing, but it would be nice if I did a better job of that at centering the camera. So we have a rexus done here. Time for some hydro dissection. Advance the cannula now. Is this good hydro dissection? I think we got some hydro delineation. Not so much hydro dissection, and that may come back to cause an issue later. Again, not really rotating, a little more dissection here with the fluid. And it slightly prolapses out of the bag. Now it rotates. You have to learn to be self-critical in watching your own videos. That's the basis for improvement. Be your own toughest critic. So we got our instruments in the eye. We're going to buzz in the probe. And advance the chopper. And there's the chop in half. And we'll bring the pieces up. I'm a little bit uncomfortable the way we're sitting. The eye's a little bit towards the nasal canthus. There's some conjunctival chemosis here. We're still proceeding with the case. There's the second half of the nucleus. We're getting that up. Again, you see that chemosis coming on now. Lots of reflections from the microscope lights off the conjunctiva. And now there's a big epinuclear shell. So our hydro dissection was actually a hydro delineation. And now we're stuck with this big, thick epinuclear shell. Certainly we'll get it out, but it makes for a less efficient procedure. And again, lots of fluid everywhere. Why? Not the best draping, a little bit of a chemosis. So try grab the cortex. And the cortex is being held down by an epinuclear shell. Hmm. Try again, different quadrants. Not having a whole lot of success here. There's a little bit. You can start to see this big, thick epinuclear shell. There it is. I'm going to try to get underneath this. That's probably our best bet. It can still be aspirated with the, the IA probe. You don't have to use a phaco probe. There's the part of that thick shell. And it goes down okay. But this is where we should have had better hydro dissection at the beginning of the case. Now I'll get under that epinuclear shell. And now I can apply vacuum with more confidence. And there the shell comes up. Now when the shell goes down, here we go, that's the end of it. Now we can actually remove the cortex. So it would have been nice if we were able to separate that earlier. Now, sub-incision will have a hard time grabbing for it. Uh, in this case, we're using this transformer IA tip. This is a neat invention. I wish it was my invention. It's that good. And now we can split it and use a bimanual approach, irrigation with the right hand, aspiration with the left, and we can remove that clean up the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim as well. So again, we definitely need to learn to be self-critical. That's how I improve. So in this case, I could have draped better. I should have held the eye better at the beginning of the case when I had the fixation ring. I should have had a better hydro dissection. It would have made things more efficient. Now we'll implant the lens here. Here comes the lens. And as the lens goes in the eye, single piece acrylic lens, loaded by my technician, we realize that 
even the technician can learn. See how that trailing haptic of the lens is less than ideal? So we'll rotate into position, let it all open up. Of course, the there's no downside in terms of optical quality for the patient, and the lens is still fine. It just wasn't loaded ideally. Go under the lens to remove viscoelastic, and we're going to finish up the case as usual. So this is a case where I wanted to show you what goes through my mind tens of thousands of cataract surgeries later. What do I think when I operate? I focus on the case and then afterwards when I watch the video and I still record and watch my own videos. I may not keep the videos, but I certainly record them initially to learn from them. I think, what could I have done better? And that little incremental improvement every step of the way is what gets you to being truly a master surgeon. So we're going to finish up the case here. Again, a very, very good case, routine case, but there are steps that I could have and should have done better. And so I'm showing you here, look, retained viscoelastic in the eye. I'm glad I'm squirting out at the end. So maybe we could have done a better job with removal of viscoelastic with the eye probe. Practice this. Be your own toughest critic. Thank you.